Great. So uh, thanks again for having me at this great meeting. Uh, I'm really excited about using my uh, AirPods on the way home uh, on the flight. And uh, really, you guys have done a, Paul, uh, everybody here has done a great job. And I think um, I really like the dialogue and discussion here. So I want to try to bring us around now to the interventional aspect of this talk. And, you know, we've already kind of alluded to the fact that there's a lot starting to go on, but we really don't understand all this space that that well. So I'm going to talk about the Triline device, which is really kind of the first one moving out forward in the tricuspid space. And so this is the Triline procedure, and the steps are as follows. So uh, essentially, we're trying to perform a bicuspidization of the tricuspid annulus uh, by doing a posterior plication. That's a lot of big words kind of going in there. But what we do is we actually come underneath the tricuspid annulus with the catheter. We deliver a wire up above. Uh, through the tricuspid annulus, we snare it. We then pull through that snare, the, a pledget system. Uh, we then deliver a pledget. Then we do that again in a second spot. And then we bring those two things together to kind of pull that annulus further together. And the nice thing about this is that we have the ability to kind of really customize things depending on the patient's anatomy. So if you really think about this technology, you really have the ability, if it's a little less dilate, not as quite as much dilation, you could put one pair in. Uh, you could do two different ways of two pairs. So you could then, if it's more, you could do a classic K procedure, which is where the surgeons used to actually just put sutures here to do this instead. And that's for, we think, maybe more moderate severe dilation. And then you could do like more of a series pair if you think you have an even more dilation. And really, the nice thing about this is you're only leaving behind these little sutures, so you really leave the door open for any other thing you need to do down the road. So I'm going to show you this early feasibility results. Becky and myself are the PIs for this trial. And, um, you know, I think the summary here is that th these are complex patients. You know, most of these patients had prior mitral valve surgery. As we alluded to earlier, a majority of these patients have had some kind of arrhythmia disorder in the past, and they're all on diuretic therapy as well. Actually, that's uh, coming off, sorry. It is actually 100% diuretic therapy. I'm not sure why it comes across that way. So the big thing with these pa this technology is that this was a very, very safe technology. Is when we looked at that slide that Becky showed earlier about where these technologies fall of appropriateness and what we want to actually use, we think we want to have something that we know is very safe because, you know, the efficacy in these isn't like a TAVR and the tricuspid spirits. This is something where we're going to have a little bit more of a gray zone of how incredibly efficacious it potentially is. So, again, 30 day mortality, free from any mortality. There really was only one procedural technical issue, and that was really only uh, one unplanned surgery that the patient did fine from as well later. Uh, and then there was one actual also time where there was a right coronary artery that needed to be stented because, as we mentioned earlier, the right coronary artery runs behind the tricuspid annulus. So when you do cinch there, some you can actually narrow the right coronary artery as well. So if you look at actually the 39 patients of this data now, 30 days, 100% free uh, from all cause mortality, and only one patient passed away uh, within the first year for the technology. So I think it does show that there is actually a robust safety signal with this technology. And as we alluded to earlier, honestly, the most impressive thing we see with this, and I think with most of the tricuspid devices, is the improvement in quality of life. And it goes to kind of what we need to base things off, because it is a little bit tricky when we use these things. But there was very robust improvements in Minnesota living with heart failure, which I'm NYJ class as well as with six-minute walk test. Now, what not, is not necessarily quite as robust is the reduction in TR. So we have a reasonable reduction in tricuspid annular diameter, tricuspid valve area, and we talk about PISA ERA, about the per-protocol patients. We look at this having about, you know, 40% reduction in that. And, uh, you know, I think in summary, when we think of this technology, we think of it as being a safe, safe, safe procedure with a moderate reduction in TR, maybe compared to a few of the other technology in this space. Now, what's interesting and challenging when we alluded earlier to the idea that, you know, we get excited in the procedure, we see this really the TR going away, but then we might see in follow-up it's a little different, is this, this is the actual data. So we said about 30, 35% post-procedure, uh, the 30-day reduction TR. But what's challenging is interprocedurally, the two largest volume centers, Northwestern and Piedmont, and we're presenting this at TCT this year, we had much greater reductions in the actual ERA reduction interprocedurally. And the reason I think this is actually important and may become more relevant in this space is, yes, there are some changes of volume and pressure in the middle of the case, 
But this is the one time where we actually have a true change in endpoint. So we started the procedure, we had a quantification in this patient, and we finished the procedure. And there wasn't that much changing in between. And so I do think down the stream, it'll be important to look in these technologies, their interprocedural changes, and better trying to extrapolate and understand that, knowing that, that we lack all those other variables within that as well, outside of that. So I want to kind of take us home with just it's what I think is really unique about this technology. So this is actually the first patient we ever treated. So it's a 76-year-old female. She had massive, severe to massive TR, class three heart failure, prior mitral valve surgery, AFib, chronic coronary disease, et cetera, et cetera. So she was enrolled in our Scout 1 EFS, and she was successfully initially treated with the procedure with just one pair, and that was all we had at that time. Now, at the end of the procedure, we had mild to moderate TR, and you know, it was our first case, we were happy about that. And she, as you're gonna see here, she was really having more TR and follow-up, but she felt great. I mean, this woman felt phenomenal. I mean, she would literally call the news networks in our local city and said, I gotta tell you about how great I feel this new technology is doing Piedmont. It was really incredible. And so, because of that, her TR came back over time, we, you know, and her symptoms eventually came back, and so we submitted her for compassionate user retreatment. So here's what we had initially seen. So we had done the initial procedure, just one plication. Everything looked pretty good. Our proposal for the second procedure is we're going to do a replication. We're going to actually do, essentially do a classic K. Uh, so we've now done another plication on the first one, and then we're going to do another plication farther up the annulus. And so this was her case initially. So at the end, starting screen TTE, we had a PZORA of 0.68. It discharged post the first plication. 0.38. So we went to moderate severe afterwards. And this is by Becky's core lab, so you know it is exactly right. So um, now what happened after that is, so this is the results of how she kind of trended afterwards. So EFS patient, if you look at her trend in TR, you can see that around three months to six months, you know, again, this always varies a lot. There's a still an amount of TR. But again, she felt phenomenal. And around 22, 23 months, it's really started to kick in. And you see that I think what we naturally see in these patients is that just, just a natural progression over time, these disease processes likely are to come back. So here's a brief image of our retreatment. So you can see there's a whole lot of these things here now. So again, we did the first two plications really around the first one, and then we did an additional, this is the final plication, uh, again, a little bit more up the annulus. And you can appreciate just that the plicating as you can actually see us closing here under 3D, and the, really the color did get significantly better. And so at the beginning of the procedure, or this is her pre-stuff, she had an ERA of 0.61. Afterwards, ERA of 0.23. Actually, don't have her final images as follow-up here, but actually now it's even better, actually, surprise looking. So it's actually mild, traced a mild TR now. I mean, she feels so much better again. And I think it really opens the idea that I think this is a novel technology because I do think, as Besky alluded to, most patients TR with surgical repair, they come back four or five years later. And I think that's because this is a functional process. We have never stopped the fundamental problem of what caused our TR in the first place. We're just trying to address some of what it's caused downstream. And when we do that, the process is going to come back every single time and then we do repair patients. And so having a technology where it's relatively easy, maybe not quite as robust in the initial re uh, reduction, but that you can relatively easily retreat may be in a very effective strategy for how we look at these patients downstream. Again, here is her total ERA reduction here or sorry, her valve air reduction. So again, trial line again, it allows you to customize things. I think that makes it unique. I think the technology is very safe. Again, modest reductions of TR with very strong improvements in quality of life. I think it's avenues for treatment downstream could be, if we we're talking about who we need to treat, it's probably earlier, and this could be an incredibly good technology for people earlier because it is very safe, um, and for people that may potentially need more retreatments downstream. Thank you.